What is up, YouTube? You are listening to another episode of Behind the Wall, presented by Perky Jerky. As always, I'm Thermite917, along with Kane Jr. 88 and Probo43. This week, we were in the Jewel of the Desert, Phoenix, or ISM Raceway, as we don't like to call it. It was the IK9200 for Xfinity and the Ticket Guardian 500 for Cup. And with the race recap for Sunday's race, here is Tyler. Take it away. Oh, I sure will. With pleasure. Ryan Blaney started on the pole, and Chase Elliott was on the outside. He actually beat Ryan Blaney to the start-finish line on the initial start, and then he got black flagged. So nice going on that one, Chase. Ryan Blaney leads for 35 laps, and then Kyle Busch decides to take over. He leads for just a little bit until Eric Jones has a right rear tire failure and turns one and two. The yellow comes out for the first time. Kyle Busch navigates his way through some cars that took two tires and gets back into the lead. And the stage is near conclusion when Brad Keselowski has a tire problem of his own and brings out another yellow. This sets up a short run to the end of the stage. And there's a split strategy where Ryan Blaney stayed out and he held on to win stage number one. There was a long green flag run of 65 laps to start stage number two until a caution led to the end of the stage where Alex Bowman blew a tire, and got into the wall a little bit. Kyle Busch was the leader at that point, and he ended up winning the stage. Stage number three starts, and very quickly, Michael McDowell finds himself in the wall after his throttle stuck in turn number three. Then we get back going. 29 laps go by, and Alex Bowman kills real good by slamming the wall once again in turn number three, ending his day. Kyle Busch resumes leading as he had been, and 19 laps later, Chase Elliott, he had an up and down day. He spins on his own in turn number four, bringing out yet again another yellow. The strategy is split once again at this point. Comers and goers, Kyle Busch is kind of buried a little bit in the top ten with four tires. Eric Amarola took the lead. He was in front for 26 laps until Ryan Blaney got it. And then the final two cautions of the day occurred right within this about the same time frame of each other as Ryan Priest had a little funny incident on the backstretch, banged off the damn wall, and Brad Kozlowski hits the inside wall, avoiding him, and yet Priest completely kills it just a handful of laps after the restart, and that turns out to be the final caution of the race. Ryan Blaney's got a hold of it. He runs away. Kyle Busch kind of working his way through a few people. Lap traffic kind of holds him up. This is actually the longest run of the race with 74 laps. It goes to the finish. Fuel's getting a little bit tight between the top runners, but Kyle Busch gets by Ryan Blaney with just under 15 to go. Pulls out to a little bit of a lead. Martin Truex Jr. was hounding him down as they were both saving fuel. He gets the second, but the laps just ran out, and Kyle Busch gets his first win in 2019 by 1.29 seconds over Truex. Ryan Blaney in third, Al Marola in fourth, and Denny Hamlin rounds out the top five. Kyle Larson, Kurt Busch, Jimmy Johnson, Kevin Harvick, and Joe Logano are your top ten finishers. A couple of additional stats, nine cautions for 57 laps, a total of 17 lead changes, and Kyle Busch led the most laps at 177. Oh, ugh. So, the fourth race is in the books. Uh, Kane, we must give race ratings now, so what do you think of this one in four race? Hmm, I really don't know what to give for a rating. There was a decent amount of action, especially on the restarts, but it was basically the Kyle Busch show all day long, so I'm going to give it a 5 out of 10. Nick, what's your rating? I'm going to go a little higher. I'll give it a 6 out of 10. The latest package, like this was technically the fourth package of the year, but it, it was irrelevant. That didn't really mean it was a bad race. It just kind of it was a typical Phoenix race. Restarts were crazy, even crazier with how the finish line was moved. They were really using turn one and two, getting on the apron, making it like five and six wide at times. There was some contact. Even on the long runs, they were making the, the high side work at times. And there were a good amount of cautions, even though they weren't all for just racing incidents. But it still kind of mixed up the flow, made it a little more entertaining than it would have been otherwise. In the end, like Kane said, it was the Kyle Busch show. There's really not much else to that. Ryan Blaney tried to make it something, but it just wasn't meant to be. And this race will just go in the books as a semi-forgettable one. So, Tyler, what's your rating? Yeah, I'm also going to give it a 6 out of 10. And thanks for taking everything I had to say about this race. <laughs> I mean, exactly. Uh, package was irrelevant. Typical Phoenix race. Kyle Busch, blah, 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 blah. Really, there's nothing different to add here. Uh, it's just so tough. 
to have a race for the win. When you have a car as good as Kyle Busch had, it's already annoying to have to see him win and run out front. But when you're good on the short run and on the long run, I mean, there was just no beating him. Unless he had a massive problem or totally got screwed on a restart. And even fuel mileage didn't beat him. Like, they had it covered on every pit stop, every scenario, uh, on restarts. I mean, he made some of them look easy. Just ridiculous. That's it. Mm, I'm just going to get even angrier if I keep talking about it. So, just another one of those races. Okay, you're done. See you next time out at Phoenix, maybe. I don't know. I don't care. Okay. All right, it's that time of the show. Now it's time to hand out some awards for the Phoenix Race Weekend. So kicking it off with that classic, who had the rage and stippy in the desert? This week it was Chase Elliott in the cup race. Like Tyler said in the recap, he jumped the initial start, beat Blaney to the line after Blaney spun the tires. Chase and his uh, crew chief were a little salty that that happened because they're like, oh, it's not fair because Blaney spun the tires. Well, the rule's the rule. Don't beat him. Just don't do it. You had room behind you to back off a little bit. Just don't throw your race away on the initial start, damn it. Simple as that is what it is. So moving on to the next award, Kane. All right. The next award is Blinded by the Light. And it goes to Justin Allgaier and Christopher Bell, who were running second and third in the Xfinity race behind that old jackass Kyle Busch when Stephen Light decided to blow a motor in the middle of turns one and two. It was a freaking catastrophe. You couldn't see a damn thing through all that smoke, and neither could they. And they ended up getting in the oil and sliding into the wall. And Christopher Bell's day ended up being over after that, but Justin Allgaier was able to continue. Unfortunately, not in the top 10. He wound up finishing in 14th. As once again, for the second week in a row, the two guys who could have given Kyle a run for his money both decide to wreck. Just so <laughs> fucking disappointing. It's like every time Kyle has a chance to be beaten, some stupid happens, and he just goes off and grabs another win. Yeah. God <laughs> damn it. It sucks. <laughs> next award. <laughs> the next award is the day from hell. And that goes to Eric Jones, who was the first caution of the race. Man, he blew that right rear tire, lost multiple laps immediately. He ran the rest of the race, but man, finished 29th, eight laps down. I mean, that is what we call the pure day from hell. He knew his race was over early. I hope they gave him a little pint of Reezer's ice cream to eat because what else is there to do when you're running in no man's land for virtually the whole day? So, socks to suck. You did save it. I mean, I guess that's something, but man, damn, Eric. You're prone to having days from hell, though, so this is nothing new for you. Next award. The next award is the... Straight Jacket Award! And it's kind of an interesting one, because it goes to Daniel Suarez and Michael McDowell for qualifying. You must be freaking crazy if you're going to beat the crap out of each other after a qualifying incident. I understand being upset. Suarez was on a hot lap, and McDowell was kind of in front of him going all slow like McDowell likes to do. Then McDowell said Suarez was trying to wreck him, but you don't, like, just try to start something when Suarez is going over to talk. On the other hand, Suarez was not phased by it, and he threw McDowell right to the ground and got pinned to the hood, and, and McDowell was trying to grab his shoe and everything. It was just like this hilarious mess. We haven't seen anything like that since the John West Townley Spencer Gallagher incident at Gateway a few years back. It was just... Again, it's qualifying. I get the emotions, and the sport needs it, but that just... It just kind of makes you look a little bit silly. Suarez handled it kind of... Well, he said that, you know, he'll give respect, but if you don't give it back, I'm going to kick your ass. And McDowell's just trying to shrug it off with that little smile of his. But anyway, that was probably the highlight of the weekend. Moving on. All right, moving on, we have the cigars. We got three to give away from the Xfinity race. The first one goes to Ryan Truex, who, in his first race of the season, driving the eight car for Dale Jr., he came home in second. Wow! I mean, it's his first Xfinity start of the season since, obviously, last fall at Homestead when he drove for Colleg Racing. But, hey, second place in Xfinity? I never thought we'd be saying that about Ryan Truex, so good for you, Ryan. Our next cigar goes to his junior motorsports teammate, Michael Annette. What? Another cigar for Michael Annette. He finishes eighth, 
That is his third top 10 of the season. He already, through four races, has matched his 2018 total for top 10 finishes. That is freaking crazy, and I don't think anybody expected this out of Michael Annette. Congratulations. And our final Xfinity Cigar, once again, Ryan Sieg, another top 10 finish. He comes home in 10th. At this rate, it's pretty much business as usual for him as... I learned during the week that he now has a stronger technical alliance with Richard Childress Racing, and a part of that is he gets their 2018 cars. So the equipment got a major upgrade for him, and now he's showing it every week by uh, running inside the top 10. So congratulations, gentlemen. And now moving on to the cup cigars. Yes, we have just two of them, and they go to the back half top 10 finishers. First, Kyle Larson. He finished sixth, his best result of the young season thus far. He just had a real decent day. He started really low in the field and just kind of worked his way up methodically and even kind of challenging the top five a little bit, just settled in, finished in solid place. He was the highest finishing driver for Chevy, so that's a good thing in its own. It was solid to see, even though he would rather contend for wins. The next cigar goes to Jimmy Johnson. Wow, he's actually getting one. That's insane on its own. He finished eighth, which is a decent run. His second top ten of the year. And after the shit outings in the last two weeks, I bet it was damn nice for him and the team to get himself up there, actually just have a consistent day in the top ten, and end up being the highest Hendrick finisher after he was the worst Hendrick qualifier. So, nice job, Jimmy. We're done with those cigars, but we still have one final award. Oh, I look forward to this every week. I'm excited we have it. Hmm, is it is it crying related? I, I don't know. Why don't you fill us in, Nick? Oh, man. We love to do it, and we have another one. It's the crying towel, and it goes to a, a driver that has shown a lot of emotion over the years, and it is Bubba Wallace. And this was just kind of out of the blue during the race. We saw a tweet from Jeff Gluck that Bubba was pissed at someone, and we don't know who as of this time. We'll find out later if we know. But, Kane, what did Bubba say over the radio? Motherfucker, I don't care who he is. He'll be in the fence. I'm going to wad his shit up. Oh, (laughs) Bubba. (laughs) Why you got to get all mad and upset like that? You're... I get it, you're running outside the top 25 again, just like you always are, but why don't you stop getting angry about it and just accept the fact that that's pretty much where you're going to finish every week because you're driving for Richard Petty Motorsports. (laughs) Oh my god, Bubba. I want to like you, but god damn it, it's it's unbearable. <laughs> Stop being a big old cry baby! Oh, Bubba! Daryl Bubba Wallace Jr. Oh, I bet you were team bacon this week, weren't you? You probably were shitting your pants during the race after one of those McDonald's burgers! Oh, I'm still salty about that paint scheme. I don't know what that has to do, but the point is, you're running like shit. Quit whining. You're on the damn same level of Austin Dillon as far as whining during the race. Calm your ass down. You got a hot girlfriend to go to after the race is over. Have her cheer you up. Or get a hug from Richard. I don't know. Be like, Richard, I want to put on your hat. (laughs) (laughs) Give me a Richard. Give me your hat. I'm so sad. (laughs) Oh, I'm so sorry. I finished 22nd again, Richard. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't mean it. Oh, it's not my fault. I don't set up the car. Why don't you go ask my crew chief, whoever the hell Derek Stamets is? I haven't even seen him in a shop. He's too busy getting coffee and donuts. Oh! The point is, you guys suck. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've reached that point in the episode where we talk about the best paint schemes of the week. We have three of them once again, and we hope you enjoy the montage.
And yeah, we got three bad ones as well. Tyler, take it away. We're going to start with the car in the Xfinity series, and it's Ryan Truex as the Ryan Truex experiment continues and has now found its way to JRM. His first race in the car yielded a very good finish, but dear Lord, this paint scheme. The Martin Truex Jr. Foundation can't walk for a cause. Obviously, as we always say, when there's a good cause on a paint scheme, we support that. Who wouldn't? But my lord, this overly generic car just is an eyesore. You got your little swooshes. Get your white base. Way too much teal. You got a cream swirl and then black on the quarter panel for good measure, I guess. What I will say is the number's teal, which that's not a good thing either because it kind of blends in a little bit on the sides. With the generic nature of it, it kind of goes along with this paint scheme. So if you were going for that... I guess you achieved it, but it's just too generic for me to actually think, oh, this is good. It's not. <laughs> it's just, ugh. It kind of reminds me of, like, a pre-made NASCAR Heat 3 paint scheme or something. I was going to say that, too. Oh, my wow, God, you're dude. right. You're so right on that. Wow. It's not awful. I'm just disappointed in you. Do better. I like the catwalk text. I mean, they could have done something pretty cool with this car, but they pissed it away. So, um, oh, well, enjoy your second, I guess. Next paint scheme. All right, the next bad paint scheme is Kurt Busch's Global Poker Camaro. I mean, what's happening? First of all, I don't mind the matte black. It just kind of looks like the monster paint scheme with different sponsors slapped on it. But once you get near the front, you have this little itty-bitty design right on the nose, and even that doesn't look that good. Either design the whole car or don't design it at all. What are you trying to do here? It doesn't work in any way. It just, it looks like a snowplow or something. God, congrats on getting another sponsor. It probably should have been for Vegas, but I guess better late than never. At least you don't have like the, the diamonds, hearts, spades, and clubs on the roof like you originally were going to, but it still doesn't really look good in any way. It's just a basic nothing kind of paint scheme. And I guess we're used to seeing that this year. So can't get too upset, but Man, this next paint scheme, we've seen it a few times, and it has another variation. Kane, what is it? Oh, my God. Ryan Newman and Oscar Meyer are back again this week, and this time, instead of turkey subs, it's bacon! Yes, the whole car is covered with a gazillion bacon strips formed up in a pattern all over the damn body we seriously just went through this a couple weeks ago at daytona with the turkey subs and now we got bacon i think we've made it known already we're sick and tired of food being incorporated into a paint scheme it just does not work all right the only instance of bacon being incorporated into a paint scheme and actually looking somewhat decent would be Eric Almirola's Bacon for Life Smithfield paint scheme from Talladega, the car that he won with. That actually looked okay. This, however, oh my god, get it out of my head. Oscar Meyer, I know you could do better. Your car that you ran at Darlington last year with Matt Kenseth, that actually looked okay. But what the hell is this? Uh, oh my god, I think I'm going to... I think I'm going to be sick. <laughs> Kane, <laughs> somebody get the toilet. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, my God. Get him a bucket. <laughs> oh, but seriously, good God. Did you eat any of that undercooked bacon off a of Bubba's car from a few weeks ago? <laughs> I think I might have. <laughs> you can't even read the bacon text, by the way. No, you can't. It blends in with the rest of the scheme. All righty. See you next week, Boris Pain Schemes. We know you're coming. Fuckers. It's fantasy time. So let's talk about the results from Phoenix. Nick, he gets a win. Holy Lord. He did something right this time by picking Kyle Busch. Your base winner. 56 points earned from Mr. Thermite. Kane, racking up another solid result with Martin Truex Jr., the second place finisher, gets 42 points. I picked Kevin Harvick, who had a very un-Kevin Harvick-like performance at Phoenix, leading a whole no laps and finishing a mediocre ninth. But he still got 37 points. And Damani, with a poor choice of Brad Keselowski, who had a hellish day of his own, finishing 19th and only scored 18 points. So that means he is first up for Auto Club. Damani, who are you taking for the Club of Autos? I'm not surprised about anything. Congratulations. Thanks, Damani. Appreciate it. 
All right, I'm up next. Who am I going to take? I've been shitting the bed hard to start this season. I'm actually last in the points so far. Um, who am I going to take? I'm going to take Martin Truex Jr. Sticking your head up a butcher's ass, but then, no. Won there last year. Been really solid. Had a quiet start to the season. He's got a breakthrough. It just makes sense for him to do it here because that's the exact same place that he broke through at the beginning of the year last year. So I hope my logic is right for once. Like I said, I'm in a real deep hole. Get me out of it, Martin. Kane, you're up next. All right. Well, we all know how good he used to be at the two-mile tracks, and he loves running up right next to the wall. And Auto Club encourages that. So I'm going to take Kyle Larson, Young Money. Motherfucker! Nick, who is your pick? Well, I wanted Kyle Larson, to be honest, but then you took him. I'm going to go with Kevin Harvick. Yay! Like Tyler said, he didn't really have a great race at Phoenix, but Auto Club is one of his better tracks. He made a boner move there last year. We all know that. But I just think, you know, he's he's due for one. You know, it would just be the perfect start to the year. Just for what winners we've seen so far, the... The big three, minus Truex, Joey Logano thrown in there. It's just Harvick is due, and it's probably going to happen. So that's my pick, and that's it for fantasy. Well, this has been another delicious episode of Behind the Wall presented by Perky Jerky, the jerky that's always perky, on your shelves at Walmarts and other variety of locations, but only in two flavors most of the time. Stock up your shit. Do better, Perky Jerky. Also, we're waiting on our checks. Still, like, come on. I know we only rack in 26 views an episode at best, but we still deserve props, damn it. We try. So, for Damani HD, we're going to set up that guest appearance. It's happening soon. He's been watching races sporadically along with losing pairs of pants. I, I don't know. Uh, he's got problems in a lot of areas. For Kane Jr. 88, <laughs> he also has a lot of problems, but dog food is not one of them. He feeds his dogs. So he's a good pet owner, if nothing else. <laughs> for Thermite 917, I wish I could say that he was good at something. Regular season titles, I beat that like a dead horse. Um, he's good at paint schemes. Yeah, that, that's that's another thing. All right. Uh, he's still waiting for a job. Uh, he loses every contest because, I mean, he's not really that nice of a guy. And teams would rather go with somebody else. I don't really blame him. I can't, yeah, myself, I can't oh, tell oh. if this is a compliment or an insult, but I'll take it. <laughs> I know you will. And for myself, Pro Bowl 43. Boy, I gave you some bolsterous meatiness in this outro, so uh, hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you next time at Behind the Wall. You've been behind the wall. Later! Yeah, yeah. Okay, I got it. You good? Yeah, good. Alright. What is up, YouTube? Hold on, my controller disconnected. <laughs> I just want to make sure it, I just want to make sure it didn't stop the recording because like on the PS3 I said wireless controller is gone to sleep. Okay, I still I still hear background noise, by the way. I know, it's not me. Well, I'm downstairs. It's my parent my parents are watching the TV in the family room. Well we can't room. have that happening. Well, where do you want me to go then? Huh? Were you always Maybe you're right. <laughs> <sighs> fine, I'm going upstairs. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, wh where are you at? In a bathroom? In a corner or something? <laughs> okay, let's go. What is up, you two? And this is Wheel of Fortune. What? Are we good now? Yes. Five, yes. <laughs> the kibble's in the bowl. The, the parents are downstairs. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> they rack them back up and go green again. Kyle Bush ends up, hold on. Hey. Jeez, you are bottling this bad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he turned off his mic. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. He must really be thinking about what happened next in the race. Stop it. God damn. So... I had to go for a minute. Well, we're oh, doing a well. podcast. I know we're doing a podcast, but see, I'm back. And I communicate. Unlike Kane, who had to take, you know, 15 minutes to pour kibbles and bits into a bin and then a cabinet somewhere, too. But it didn't necessarily mean it was the bad race all... Ah! It didn't... <laughs> I saw that coming. That's it. Bye, race ratings.
<laughs> that was a really sad ending, but that's kind of how the race ended. Yeah. All right, who's kicking <clears throat> off awards? Oh my god. What? He just right. said it. Okay. All right, it's that time no! of the week. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm giving it to Nick. Do you know which rewards you're doing, Kane? <laughs> the next award is the day from hell! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm still laughing from Kane. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Petty is probably like, Sorry, Bubba, I'm just a little stressed right now because Kyle Bush is catching me and wins. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Uh, that's hilarious. It's not my fault, my crew chief. I don't know who the hell it is. I think it's Drew Blicken's dicker. He can't sell no. the car. <laughs> Drew Blicken's dirt for pin Suarez to the hood. <laughs> oh, was it? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's how far <laughs> Drew Blicken's dirt was popping. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> suck to suck. Who the hell is this crew chief thing? Who is it? I have no fucking clue. I'm gonna find this out because I have to make a comment about it. Come on, <laughs> racing reference, go faster. Okay. Batman. <laughs> Derek. Who the hell is Derek Stamets? <laughs> Derek. Derek Stamets. <laughs> God Stamets. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, we are not surprised by anything. So we're going to kick it off with a car in the Xfinity series. Well, the Ryan Truex experiment. What the hell? Background noise. Kane always like dropping a pen or a fucking something. I don't know. I know. Anyway. Sorry. <laughs> Hold your pen. All right. The next. Yeah, but and we'll see you next time at Behind the Wall. You've been behind the wall. Later! <laughs> You've been behind the wall. Ten second pause. Later! <laughs> I mean, it'll... The, the thing of it is, I will edit it to, to, to ensure perfect Well, well I'll, I'll edit it. Well, yeah, exactly. You'll edit it, but then I'll edit it more. I think Kane's getting ready for his mountain climbing. Later. <laughs>